Yo, Wyatt begins in like five, four, three, two, one. Welcome to Wyatt. And I'm your host, Wyatt O'Brien Evans. Brr, woof, God damn it! woof, woof, woof. My listeners, my listeners, my listeners. Picture this. It's a very, very frigid winter night and nothing is keeping Raheem warm, not even with the heat jacked up or even with the fireplace spitting out brilliant embers. Raheem muses, dang, what I really need is a big boy. Then all of a sudden, a welcome individual appears out of nowhere, you know, like poof, just like a freaking genie, but naked, naked, but naked. Our man Raheem is paralyzed, mesmerized. That's because his genie brother is chocolate. He's thick, broad. Half day, chunky, swole. His piercing brown eyes connect with the totally flabbergasted Raheem, who's now in lockdown. Next, Genie Brother gestures to himself from the very top of his shaved and perfectly formed head to his cute, manicured, blocked toes. And then, with a deliciously nasty twinkle in his eyes and a sly grin, he utters, Yo, they call me Mr. Mr. Big Boy. You want to get all caught up in all of this beefiness and thickness that's right here, just waiting for you? Hey. Let me snuggle and cuddle up with ya. I can hold you tight and so nice and ever so right. Needless to say, Raheem's mouth is on the floor. On the floor. He's thinking about what he wants to do with that mouth. You know what I'm saying? Ha <laughs> ha! You're feeling me, yeah. So, with so much swagger, Mr. Mr. Big Boy sashays right up to Raheem and lickety split. Raheem's all caught up in the exquisiteness, the rapturous heat of the beefiness and the thickness. Y'all, I say all that because our special guest today is a force in the big boy community. He's educating and increasing awareness of the subset of gay SGL, same gender loving men, in a consequential way. And I'm going to shoot the breeze with him in just a few seconds. But you know what? After the show, visit my online home. WyattEvans.com. That's W Y A T T E V A N S dot com. The go to a destination for LGBTQ news, features, commentary, and entertainment. And I'm beyond jazzed that WyattEvans.com is visited by 100 countries on the regular. Yeah, baby. And while you're at WyattEvans.com, Check out my smoking hot, nothing can tear us apart series of novels, which are full of masculine romance, action, adventure, and intrigue. And y'all, the current installment is titled Frenzy. Frenzy. Hey, it's all on the yummy, yum, yum, yum. A program note, my sidekick. Madam Pussy the Lord Cockadoodle Doo is off today. Well, when you think about it, she's always off. Anywho, she's on this tour, this crazy ass book tour, with this crazy ass book titled, get this, Popular Penetration. 
how to treat your man's big old cucumber in just the right way. And you know what? This thing is actually doing well. This book is actually doing well, so go figure. I, I just don't get it. Anyway, now let's turn to our very, very special guest. Y'all, he's a force in the forefront of the big boys and a leader educating us about that community and spreading awareness. And this brother's also the author of the popular series of novels titled The Big Boy Chronicles, which are chock full of intrigue, provocative situations, secrets, secrets, and of course, the thickness. And this gentleman is an entrepreneur with big boy clubs in multiple cities. So y'all, he's got a lot going on. So without further ado, Wyatt welcomes the big man himself, Mr. Tony, Teddy Bear, Harper, Zuninga. Talk at me. How the hell are you? I'm doing good, Wyatt. How you doing? I am doing great. And I want to thank you for dropping by Wyatt. Oh, sure. No problem. I'm having a good time right here. <laughs> okay, now, brother. I mean, because inquiring minds want to know exactly why is Teddy Bear your nickname? How did you get that? Oh, my goodness. Um, well, I got that from my husband, to tell you the truth, because um, I'm Spanish. I'm from Guatemala. So he, right. he, he always called me Peluche, where Peluche means in Spanish, teddy bear. So I've been adopting it ever since. I love it. What? Wonderful. Wonderful. Now, you were 52 years old, correct? I'm 53, to tell you the truth. I, ah, I, okay. I'll be 54 in September. Okay, because, you know, your photos make you, I mean, your photos make you appear much younger than that. I've been told that so many times. That's why I try to keep the gray, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you, so do you use, like, uh, hair, um, what is it called? The, uh, uh Hair color for men. At times, when I went, when I make when I do want to do certain pictures, yes. But otherwise, I keep it gray. Cool, cool. Okay, Mister Harper Zuninga, let's travel down the corridors of time. Now, you hail from New York, correct? Yes. What part? Um, two parts: Brooklyn and Yonkers. Oh, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Tell us about your family. Brothers, sisters? I have a sister that lives in Brooklyn, and I have a brother who lives here in Fort Lauderdale. Oh, wonderful. So you are in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I'm in Fort Myers, Florida. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, Tony, are the are you the youngest, the oldest, I in am, the middle? No, my sister is the oldest. I am the second oldest, and then my brother. Oh, uh, okay. Got it. Now, you know what? I always like to ask my guests this question, and here it is. What were you like as a boy, a little nipper? What three qualities or characteristics best describe Tony? Oh, my gosh. Wow. Um, I say, wow. Um, I could say uh, always inquisitive. Always looking for information. I love history. Um, quiet. And also, um, last thing I could say, always looking for something that I could do to make life better. Nice. But you know, the quiet kids are the troublemakers. You do know that, right? I've been told <laughs> that and I've done that a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so oh, so only a couple of times, well, though. Okay. Listen, thank goodness the um the cell phone was not invented till I got older. Trust me. If not, <laughs> I'd be caught up in some pictures. Ooh, ah, interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like. Listen, I like you even more now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, let's fast forward to 1993, and that's when your daughter was born, right? Yes. And I was married at the time, too. I was going to ask you about that. So, okay. Um, so you were bisexual? Uh, no, at that time, I thought I was straight. And in the, in, the, in the Spanish family, you have to be 
you know, you you can't come out in a Spanish family. You just it's just that that machismo thing. And um, I was, you know, you, you you've been told you go to church, you get married, you have a child, and that be it. You shouldn't have any ins outs or any changes. Um, I learned that later on in life, um, after I got divorced, after my daughter turned three, I got divorced because I couldn't do it anymore. I, 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 I had these feelings that I was trying to hide all the time, always keep it down. Right. And it, it was not, it was unfair to me. It was unhealthy. Yeah, that's a lot of psychic and emotional stress and strain because you're not being your authentic Correct. self. I got it. I got it. So the journey was not an easy one for you to be who you really are. No, it wasn't that much easy. And then um, after my mom died and I wasn't near the family, so I was by myself. So it was a learning lesson every day and good friends. Right. Yeah, you definitely need that emotional support, mm-hmm. which is really good. Okay. Um, you are a professional in the medical administrative field. Yes. Tony, ex- yeah, tell me exactly what that entails. Well, let me tell you how it started. It started in 86 when I graduated out of high school as a medical office assistant. So wow. I've been doing that this job for almost 35 years. Whoa. Um, I, then, um, I was going to be in the union in New York, but a smart Alec, a smart Alec receptionist, <laughs> I had to tell her off after seeing my, oh, no. I saw my mother's name on the wall because she used to be a delegate and, um, oh. I was going to put my resume in, but she got stupid. So I told her <laughs> off, told the manager off there and walked out. Um, when I walked out, I walked into Winston Medical Staffing and they took care of me for 20 years. Um, I wow. worked in every hospital in New York, Brooklyn and Yonkers. Um, <laughs> I worked from <laughs> Presbyterian Hospital and 168th Street all the way down to Maimonides in Brooklyn. So oh. um, they kept me busy, thank goodness, I say. Um, yes, I had no PTO time. Yes, I had no time off for myself, but it kept me going. It kept my experience up. And um, I learned to deal with people because you have to deal with people every different time you come into a different hospital. Right. So, yes, I've been doing it for 35 years. And right now I'm in a good job. I work for Hope Healthcare here in Fort Myers. And I'm in the front desk, as always. Well, that is wonderful. I mean, because you know what, man? So many people move from job to job and from, you know, career type to career type. But you were, you've been there for 35 years. Yes, doing it. So what in particular makes you stay in that field? I mean, what about it? Is, is particularly rewarding for you. When I see someone come in, don't know the language and needs help. And then they uh, see me and they're trying to speak English. And I said, I say in Spanish, don't worry. What do you need? And their face is a, a relief because now they could express themselves the way they're supposed to be. So they, they get the help they need. I, I get that all the time and I love it. Well, you're definitely an asset because you're bilingual. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very good. Okay. Well, let's shift gears to a conversation about the big boy community. First, let me tell you, my friend, in preparation for this show, I spoke to somebody about you. You want to know who it oh, is? Who is this person? <laughs> <laughs> Listen now, now, look now. <laughs> Look, you sound like you're a little bit afraid. Yes. Oh, well, why? Why would you be afraid? What do you have? Listen, listen. What do you have to hide? I just want to make sure. <laughs> what you got to hide? What you got to hide? <laughs> oh my goodness! Listen, this is good. What you got to I hide? Hope it's not an <laughs> 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 no, I don't think so. Okay, okay. Here it is. I spoke to Mr. James Butler. Who, as you know, he's another leader in the big boy community. Yes. And 
And James is great creator and founder of the Big Boy Project. Yes. And he dropped some words about you. And let me tell you what he said to you, about you rather. Mm -hmm. And I quote, Tony Harper Zaniga has been an influence, has been an influential staple in the big boy community. His big boy chronicles novels show us in a positive light by noting that bigger guys are sexy and can very well be the lead characters in TV shows, movies, books, and other forms of media. Body positive influencers, body positive influencers like Tony push other big men creators to make their voices heard, end quote. See, oh, what do you think? I think that's beautiful. And that's what I've been trying to push all this time, ever since I read um, Big, uh, Big Boy Blues and um, Invisible Life. I mean, I love those books and I love those authors, but it, it, I, just, I didn't see me in it. And, and, right. and I needed something. So I kept looking for a book to see me in it. And I realized there's none. None put us mm -hmm. in the positive light. They either put us where you have to lose weight if you're going to fall in love, or you, or, or you are portrayed as a clown. Oh, he's so funny, so fat, like a clown. I, I just couldn't, I couldn't stand that any longer. I know there are big boys out there that have good lives, married, professional. Why can't that be portrayed? You know what? Absolutely. I mean, I'm going to we're going to get into the Big Boy Chronicles a little bit later. But what I want what I want to first say to you is that personally, for me, I've always basically been attracted to men who were thick, not necessarily muscular with washboard waists, but, you know, they were thick, they were beefy, they were broad sized. As my mother used to say, I got to have some meat on my bones. Mm -hmm. I got to have somebody with some meat on their bones. Yes. But yes. But let me, okay. Tell our audience exactly what the big boy community is and what it means. Whoa. Um, hmm. I'm trying to think of where, where I started from with this. Um, I remember... Do you remember MySpace.com? Oh, yes. Okay, that was the 90s. And that's when it first started where you couldn't even place a picture of yourself, a selfie, as a big boy. Now, if you had a muscle, they'd be right on you, right on the front page. But if it's a, if it's a, a picture of a big boy, oh, that's spam. And that's when it started with me. I couldn't, I couldn't see that any longer. Um, uh -huh. we needed to, we, that's, they have to show body positivity. It has to show young people coming out who are heavy, who are big bone, who are football built to say, no matter how you look, you're still sexy. Right. And that's what, that's what made me start doing this. And when I started, when I see, when I saw that other people was doing the events menu. The gay bears had a long time ago, but we never had any. We wasn't even invited. So you know what? When I see Big Boy Proud, Big Boy, Big Boy Pride, I love that. When I see um uh when they when they oh I forgot the name of the title of the group, but they do like First Wives Club and they do like I think Big Boys, New York Big Boys uh club, where they do events together. I like that. Cause they they tell us, you know what, come out. Have a good time. Come with your spanks. Come, come, come with your 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 your, your swim truck, and no one will make fun of you because we all look alike at the event. So, like something like that, I think is beautiful. So this is why I come in, looking at that. I said, you know what? We need some literature on us and how we look. And you know, you're absolutely right because you know, Tony. Uh, there are far too many gay SGL, same gender loving men who have body image issues. You know, they have this incessant and obsessive need 
to achieve that so-called great body, you know, the bodybuilder physique, the washboard abs, and in turn, they're only attracted to that. Mm -hmm. So let's drill down on that just a little bit more. Well, I know that um, I have, well, okay. I know there's some, there's some men who like skinny men, some big men like skinny men, some skinny men, the admirers love the big boys. I don't, I don't, I don't mind that. That's fine. What I don't like is if someone comes to talk to you and says, you know, I think you're cute, but if you lost a little weight, look mm. better. Okay. That's what I don't like. Okay. Or let's do the opposite. Cause I've seen this too. Where an admirer will see a big boy and keep feeding him food. Like saying, the more fatter you are, the more sex you are. But that's unhealthy to a big boy. Yeah, yeah, you know what? I saw a Dr. Phil show many years ago about straight couples doing that. There was this straight Mm -hmm. couple, and this man was feeding, he was really into big women, heavy women, Mm -hmm. and he kept feeding her food, making her eat food. And it was really killing her yes, health. Yes, and that's what I don't like either, because it's, it's happening in the gay world, too. I believe it. <clears throat> I believe it. And, and that's really sad, because I, it, why try to change someone? I, I Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, I, I, don't, I don't mind you being big, as long as you're healthy. Take care of yourself. If you like being big, take care of yourself. Eat the right foods. Stay that weight. But don't let someone... Because you don't want to be, you don't want to be lonely. Tell you, oh, let's go to Bird King, let's go to Wendy's, let's go to Taco Bell, let's go to the, and and I, I want to just watch you eat. I mean, really, I've seen that, and and I've seen people die of that too. Yeah. You know, I mean, a lot of a lot of big boys of color is suffering from diabetes. I'm pre-diabetic. I have to watch what I eat. You know, right. I imagine I said, and I see all the time on Facebook and I, and I pray for these big boys that die because they either diabetic or they try to do a diet and it wasn't good for their heart or, or, or be diabetic. I mean, mm. that diabetic really messes up us boys of color and the kidneys. So it's like when I see a, 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 a thin, fine slim build with muscles going with a big boy. Oh, that's good. But then when you see them together and he's, and he is watching the, the man eat. No, that's not good. No, that, that, that's a problem. Yes. Yeah. That, that's a problem. Um, what are some misconceptions about big boys at times? Do they get a bad rap? Yes, they do. Um, they can't. Okay. Some big boys says, oh, don't take off your shirt. Oh, why you sleep? Why you swim with your shirt on? Well, some people don't like the fact that they have nips. Some big boys, because mm-hmm. they was told, oh, it's not good to have nips. You know, or the, uh, another one where some say, oh, our big boys, uh, their junk is small because their thighs are too thick and they're too big. Well, no. <laughs> That's a that's a whole lie right there because I've seen people have some eggplants, okay, and still have the stomach right there in front of the eggplant. <laughs> okay. Well, look, I've got a, I have a confession to make, everybody. I like nips. All right. Er. Look, I like nips. So you tell everybody say that Wyatt O'Brien Evans, no, not like loves. Nips. Now, now. (laughs) Trust me. A lot of us do. Yeah. There you go. Uh, Okay. um, And we just touched on this a couple of minutes Mm -hmm. ago, but I wanted to focus on it just a little bit, even more rather. Some folk think that if you're thick and heavy with a gut, that means you are not healthy. That's that's a misconception right there. Um, Why? Because it depends on the person. Now, if the person is eating properly, walks, exercise, which I need to do more of it, walks, exercise, and and do what they got to do and still be big, that means they're big bone. They are big right. bone, football build. They're always going to be thick. 
because if it's going to stay that way. But if you're a kind of person, they don't watch what you eat. Always going out to eat. Don't cook at home. Um, eat, eat, keep, eat, keep eating sweet stuff, drinking a lot of soda. You know, that's unhealthy. Mm. You have to watch what you eat. So it's, it's it depends. I, I know some people who are a little bigger than me, little broad shoulder. Okay. He goes to the gym once a week, but he's still thick. Big ass, big mm-hmm. thighs. Okay. Right. The gut, the nips. He loves it. And he is healthy. <laughs> exactly. I love me some thighs. Okay. You know, so hey. You know. You know what I'm saying? When they have yeah. thick thighs, they have a thick ass. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, too. That is just uh, uh, how I say body, how it's going to be. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, I copy that, baby. <laughs> okay. Let me, okay. Do big boys have challenges in the dating and romance department? Yes, they do. Because, okay. Let's talk because about that. A lot of them don't love themselves the way they are. Oh. If you don't love yourself, who can love you? How you gonna? How you gonna? You when you when you out there dating, you selling yourself because right. you love yourself. How can you date if mm. you don't love yourself to sell yourself? Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, right. some people. I mean, there's many, and they, they some of them are lying in the closet where they love big boys, but they've been made fun of from their homeboys because they like big boys. So they hide behind the darkness mm-hmm. to talk to someone at one o'clock in the morning. So that person who don't love himself much says, you know what? I got a boyfriend, but I can't, we can't go out. <clears throat> we always in the house. He comes at one o'clock <laughs> in the morning. I mean, come on, love yourself first. Love who you are, how big you are. And we go from there. Yeah, because, you know, in the whole dating scenario situation, if you don't love yourself, mm-hmm. If you're not self-assured, it, you know, if you have insecurity problems, that just shines through. The other person just will pick that up pretty Correct. quickly. And they will either dismiss you or they will try to use you. Yes. Because they only see you as now not a human being or a big boy. Now it's a piece of ass. Right. Okay. Because they won't, they will just, instead of kissing you, They'll kiss you in your neck, have the nips, flip you over, fuck you till they come, and then they say they got to go because they don't want to, you know, they don't want to be missed. I could not have said it any better. So, Tony, what you're saying is if you're a big boy, embrace your big boyness. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now that leads us to the 411 on your Big Boy Chronicles series of novels. So again, what made you decide to do it? Okay. Now watch this. I'm reading Elan Harris Invisible Life. Okay? Mhm. Love his book. Love his books. He has fictional characters, but the background, New York, okay, is real. He, he used old school stores that don't open up no more. So then I saw Titanic and I saw Titanic did the same thing. Everything is real, but the storyline is completely fictional. So that's what I did. I took three characters, completely fictional. And I used New York in the 90s as a backdrop. I opened up bars that's been closed for years. I opened up stores that's been closed because I wanted to bring back that 90s feel when you go down Christopher Street and have a good time and have $25 on you and you hang out the whole night and still have $5 coming back on the job board. Okay, so that's what I bought. Mm. I, I bought those in. And that's what that's what made me bring back Ring Big Boy Chronicles because I lived in the 90s. I've seen it all. I've seen boys walk down Christopher. I've seen the, the restaurants and the bars that used to be up there. Now they're not, no longer there. I've, I've hang out in the piers before they made into this plush park when they used to have 
all the the barriers and it was unsafe to go on the piers because they they the, it was rotting to go in the water. I've seen that. So what I did was I bought that back and I put two big boys, one who is home home and and going to school. In school no one knew that he's gay. Mm. Okay? Because he's a masculine big boy walking around. Three girls want him and he don't want them. <laughs> okay? Yeah. So he found he his um grandmother and grandfather doesn't know who he is. Okay. And because of his school grades, they live in the brownstone and they gave him the basement. So his mother said, You can have no girlfriends, no girls in your basement apartment. He said, No problem. Because he was gonna have guys anyway. <laughs> okay. So He's a proud big boy, gay big boy, but he just didn't tell anybody. He falls, ah. in, love, he falls in love with a gun, another guy who confused big boy from another part of the city, how they met in the subway, and how this guy leaves a note in his pocket so they could meet up. And that's how that whole thing started because he. This one is trying to find himself. This one knows who he is. Okay. And they get together. So you got two big boys trying to find love. Wow. I like that. Now, what are the titles? I think you've got, what, three books already in the series? Yeah. I have um, um, Secrecy and Backlash, which is part one of that storyline. And then part two, Love. Lust and consequences is part two of that same storyline. It continues. And then three is a whole different storyline, which is two friends have been friends for 12 years. They've been friends since they were kids. Their mothers know each other. Okay. They get older. One works in hospitals as a surgical tech, the other one is a secretary. Okay. I open up two hospitals that's closed. And I know how they are. So I, I put that in. As time goes on, they now, one is looking for an apartment because he broke up with his boyfriend and the other one is also looking for an apartment. So they found out, let's move in together because we've been friends. So they find an apartment. They couldn't find any to their mom. No, the guy's aunt says, listen, I'm moving back to my country, but I don't want to lose the apartment but you have to pay the rent. They said, no problem. So they got into a two bedroom apartment in the Lower East Side, which is impossible. Ah. Cause it's not like that at all. So they got together, they got the apartment. As time went on by five years, one is noticing the other. And after an, a brief encounter at a club, which I opened, it's closed now. Um, one kissed the other and found out they both liked each other. So they got together and they started talking, but they needed to get away because one is popular than the other because all the guys know him. So everywhere, everywhere they went, another guy was like, oh, what's up? How you doing? So they never could talk. So the other guy who's trying to talk to him got jealous all the time. Ah. Okay. So I pulled them where they got away. They went away to Florida. Went to Fort Lauderdale and I made up, which it should come out soon. If I have, if I win the lotto, I'm pulling this together. <laughs> I made um, a big boy resort. Okay. Where only big boys could go into this resort. It's, it's fenced, it's gated, it's clothed option also. Mm. So when you walk, when you drive in, Driving your parked your car, you could either pick the bungalows on the left or the hotel rooms on the right. Okay. When you get there, first you go into the big boy's house with a Z and N. Who opens the door? A big boy in a Chippendale kind of outfit. Oh my God. Okay. Saying, Welcome to a to Big Boy's Land. And you walk in and everywhere you went, every person who worked there was a big boy. Mm. 
and you walk in and you go in and check in and then they come out and then he comes and kick up the little chauffeur with the go-kart to take you to your hotel or to your bungalow. Okay. It has two pools. It will have two steam rooms, everything to cater a big boy. When you walk through the park, I even have the statue David, but it's a big boy. Mm. So things like that. And they got together. And at the end of the story, I don't want to give out the end, but so, something beautiful happens at the end of the story. Well, everybody, you have got to get. And this one is called, I Just Want to Lay With You. Well, look, I love that title. Y'all have got to get. <laughs> look, the title is enough for me. You know what I'm saying? That look, the title is enough for me. So I'm telling y'all. I mean, I'm a romance writer myself. And the title, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, <laughs> y'all need y'all need to get the big boy chronicles. Now, okay. Since you gave us that wonderful, <laughs> luscious, that wonderful, luscious scenario, let's talk about you being an entrepreneur because you've got big boy clubs and I believe Atlanta, Houston, New York. No, no, I don't have those. Those are separate. Um, those are separate entities that I ah. help promote. Um, because um, I was going to do a little book tour, but with this COVID, that stopped, and I'm promoting right. them because I see that they were helping promote body positively by having big boy fashion shows, um, uh, big boy events, uh, the the suds party. So I was going to go out there with my books and my my shirts to. Promote, but um, with this COVID, I just couldn't do it, and it was a little dangerous. So I promote for them. I have a website because, again, I had Facebook, I have Twitter, and I have Instagram. But every time I put a big boy up there wearing maybe just speedos, it gets spam. Or wearing just boxer shorts, it gets spam. Yeah, really? even um. Um, if I have them, one, I have their hands covered on their crotch and they just stand there like, yo, what's up? It gets spam. <laughs> so I got tired of it. So I said, I'm, yeah. I'm going to open, I'm opening, a, I open up a big boy's place within my website of Big Boy right. Chronicles where you have to be a member and I have to check if you are of age so you could join the membership, because I have six pages of just big boys in, in different ways of how you put it. Right, right. Mm -hmm. uh, give us your website, please. Yes, it's bigboychronicles.com. Got it. Okay. Let's segue into a discussion of love, L-U-V, love and marriage. Now, <laughs> <laughs> love and <laughs> Y'all is love, it's L-U-V and marriage. Now, you said that your husband has been your greatest support system through your life's ordeals. Yes. Let's talk about that a little bit because that's absolutely wonderful. Uh, I'll start off with the books. I've been writing okay. Big Boy Chronicles since 1995. And I finished with it and I put it away in a box. Didn't think of it. So my husband loves to clean the house. So um, he was going through boxes and he says, baby, you know, do you need to throw away these things? And I'm looking, I'm like, no, no, that's a box I, I, from the past and I need to have it. He said, fine. But well, he looked in it and read the book. And, and I came home and he said, baby, um, why this book is not published? This is good. I'm like, eh, it's okay. It's it's just about big boys falling in love. It's just, babe, they need that now. You need to do that. You need mm. to edit the book, make it refresh for now, and get it done. And make it in two parts because it's too big for one part. I thought about it and I said, you know what? Let me get into it. That's when I really got into doing that because of him. So that's why I have there's two, those two books because of my husband. The, the support is beautiful. So now I'm working on my third wow. and he's writing a book. 
So right. he's working on his book. I'm working on my fourth book. And he has a book of poems also on my site um, that he has there also on the Big Boy Chronicles. And we're doing well. And, and let me tell you, it's, it, marriage is not easy. It's a work in progress every day. I have things that I do and it, it irks him. He has things that he does. It irks me. But no matter, <laughs> no matter how it is, we love each other. We are friends. We support each other, okay? And that's how it works. I mean, like I said, I'm not easy to live with. I know I'm a pain in the ass. I know. No, not, oh, not yes. you. Oh, yes. Look, look, listen, not the teddy yeah, listen, bear. Listen, listen, listen. Come I on now. I my husband every day because I'm a pain in the ass, okay? And I tell you, it's, it's, it's wonderful. It's wonderful to have him. Trust me. Well, how long have you guys been married? It's going to be five. Okay. We were together for five years and we were married for two. We we're supposed to be married for three, but let me tell you the little drama there. Uh oh. I got divorced, correct? Well, someone in New York right. didn't do the paperwork, didn't finish it. So when I put my paperwork in that I got married to my husband, they said, no, sir, you, you already married in New York. I said, what are you talking about? I already took care of that. And to find out that they didn't finish the paperwork, so I had to take care of all that. I had to pay for another divorce through paperwork and internet. <laughs> oh, wow. And get that done. And then we got married again. My God, that is drama. drama. Yeah, that is drama. So, like I said, my, my husband has put up my, my shit. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, teddy bear. <laughs> well, let me ask you this. What would you say are the uh, three most important things that you have to do to nurture a marriage relationship, keep it alive and well, and then to keep it hot. Um, friendship. Mm. Friendship is very important. Uh, communication. And I say love. You see how I put love in the third because friendship comes first. Mm. Your yes. friends first. Yes no matter how you see it, okay? Right. And, and what I'm learning is communication because I was alone for a while and I had to learn to get off the, get off the guard and communicate more. You know what? Th that is, you know, I've mm -hmm. gone through therapy in my life um, I was a victim of intimate partner violence and abuse very early on, and I had some other issues to deal with. And I'm a strong proponent of therapy because I feel like this. For example, if you break your arm, you're going to go to the doctor. He'll probably give you pain pills and he'll probably put it in a cast. That's no different from the psyche or your emotions. Sometimes you have to go and sit on the mm -hmm. couch and figure out what's wrong with you. And sometimes it's even necessary for medication. So going back to this whole communication business, we men sometimes, Tony, have a problem in effectively and clearly communicating. Yes. You know, the other person wants you to read their mind. And it's just Judy says, I'm not Karnak. I can't read your Correct. mind. And if, you don't, and if you don't tell me what you want, you won't get it. But if you tell me what you want, you might mm -hmm. get it. So we men seem to have a problem with communication. Yes. What do you do you agree with that? I agree completely. Because I was living it. So I know. Yeah. That's completely right. Yeah. And um this is this is why I had to learn, and I'm still learning because. Listen, like I said, I'm 54. My husband is 34. Wow. Okay. That's interesting. So, yeah. That, that's so, intergenerational there. Oh, yeah. 
but we, it works together for both of us. That is why that's that's amazing. Mm-hmm. So yeah, communication is so very very important, mm-hmm. and like you said, friendship. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and then love because I, I love my husband, and you know, I mean, this is how. Watch this. On the second we met, February, we did a wedding over February 9th. Valentine's Day is February 14th. My husband's birthday is February 16th. So wow. you know, I had to hustle, right? Okay. <laughs> That's a lot of That's hustle. That's a lot of hustle. That's a lot of hustle. <laughs> That's a lot of hustle. I love it. But you know, but I, I, you know, I do it because, you know, I love him. Because you yeah. love him. Okay, now. What do you have planned for the rest of 2021? And when will the the new Big Boy Chronicles installment come out? Okay. Um, right now I'm working on I just I just changed, I just updated my logo. It's on it's on the website. And I just I just started making shirts of the logo, but I also have these shirts. Also, wonderful. Um, I also I'm right now I'm working on my third book where I'm doing something that's taboo that I knew about in the past because I used to work for a club and it, as an event planner called the Dugout. Now the Dugout in New York was mostly for gay bears. Yeah, I've heard about that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, he wanted more people of color to come into the club, to the bar, to the bar on a Sunday. So he hired me and it didn't work out because, you know, the bears were very dominant and I'm, I give them much respect. But what I saw was a friend of mine who was a big boy like me was trying to talk to a guy who was a ginger bear, which red hair. and He was football bill with a stomach and the whole nine. But mm, mm-hmm. his friend saying, no, you can't do that. That's not part of our clique. And then I went out with my friends and they told him the same. Uh-uh, you can't go with a white boy. Who would you think this is? <laughs> <laughs> so now in real life, they didn't make it together. They tried. Oh. But in my book, I'm going to put them together in a way that it's going to be kind of dramatic and see what happens. So that's my, that's my uh, fourth book. And when do you think it'll drop? September, hopefully. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> to, it's like writing is one thing. Editing and putting it together and get a good um, cover title is the, that's the hardest thing right there. Tell me about it. You know, when I talk to aspiring authors, I say, first of all, you got to have your promotional plan together because yes. I, you can have the best product out there, Tony, but if nobody knows about it, it's all for naught. Yes. But then title two, you've got to have a title that really grabs people. Yes. And that's so very important. So I know exactly what you're going through. Yes. And then I, then it costs money to get pictures, the license, to use pictures on your cover. Because you can't use just anybody because they'd be like, excuse me, did you ask me to put the picture in there? So I, I, I have to go into Adobe uh, Shutterfly, I think it's called, and pay for using male pictures that's good for the cover. So the cover, all the pictures in the cover, I paid for. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So it wasn't easy. I know. I I feel you. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so now how can us grown folk connect with you, contact you, give us all of your social media? Okay. I have, um, there's... My email is bigboychroniclesoutlook.com. I also have the website, which is bigboychronicles.com. Um, I have Facebook, which is called Teddy Bear, Tony Teddy Bear Harper Zuniga on Facebook. Those are my three. Oh, and I also have Instagram, which is also Teddy Bear Zuniga. So I, I, those are my four things at this moment. Um, but the best thing is by email or my website, because my website, you could, I always check on it. I always update it. 
my website is updated every two weeks. I always put new pictures. I always put new information. I'm also working on having an online magazine. Nice. Because in New York, they had something called HX, which was Homo Extra. Mm -hmm. I want to do a BBX, B-Boy Extra. Nice. So I, it's going to be also, it's going to be, I'm trying to put a contact together about food, health, mm -hmm. clubbing, um, stories about self-esteem. Right. You know, but that takes time to put together. It has to be the right um, site generator. So I, it will come out like a magazine online. Which means that I'm gonna have to charge for that magazine. So we'll see what happens. I'm just still in the concept of developing. I think it's a great project. I really do. Um, oh, spell out your last name, your full last name for us, please. Yes. Okay. It's Harper H A R P E R dash Zuniga. Z is in zebra. U N is in Nancy. I G is in George A. One. Now if. If I tell you when I was born, <laughs> this is a pure Spanish one now. My mother gave me the only name, which I had to go to court at five years old to cut it down. <laughs> My name was James Anthony Roberto Rufino Lino Zuniga Blanco Jr. Wow. So... I, there was an issue because my school records had one name. I had three social security numbers that had three different names. I had to go. So they said, who is this man? Who, who's this child? Please bring this child to court. So I had to go to court at five years old. And they bought out all the records on how, how my names was all broken up into pieces. And they said, okay, we have to say one thing. No more double surnames for Spanish people to come in the country. <laughs> and they cannot, they cannot do that to their child either. So now it's, my name was James Anthony Suniga. So I, I, I always use James as for business. Right. Anthony is because I cut down to Tony. It's more personal. And then when I got married, we hyphenated a name to Harper Suniga. Whoa. Yeah. Listen, I want to thank you for visiting Wyatt. You got to come back. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. Listen, I'm honored to be here. It's an honor. I, 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 people say I, I do so many things. Listen, I'm humble. I'm humbled. I'm honored to be even recognized. So it's beautiful. You know what? As Michael Jackson used to say, he used to say, oh, Tito, give me a tissue. <laughs> I'm playing with you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, there you have it. You can find the official Wyatt podcast page on WyattEvans.com. The official hashtag is Wyatt on air. And if you want to be a guest on Wyatt or you just have comments, you can email me at Wyatt on air at gmail.com. And you can follow me, Wyatt O'Brien Evans, your host on Facebook.com slash Wyatt O'Brien Evans, on Twitter at Mr. Woe, and on Instagram at Mr. Wyatt O. That's M-R-W-Y-A-T-T-O. And be sure to check out my Nothing Can Tear Us Apart series of novels, the latest being Frenzy and his predecessor, Rage, all at WyattEvans.com. So y'all, until next time, woof, goddammit, woof, woof. That's all, y'all.